I am Shusara Konakumara. Welcome to Satsang. You are beginningless. You are endless. You are divine. So I just feel like I'm being pulled into the world, but I'm trying to step out of the world. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's really, that's well put and very accurate and exactly what I'm pointing to. The, I really love the way you said it, that as you're trying really, really purposefully trying and very consciously trying to live from your understandings in the world, the world, it seems as if it's like exponentially (laughs) <laughs> pulling at you more and more to get you to function outside of them. And that is absolutely accurate. Absolutely. That's exactly what happens because you have to remember what is it that's creating the outer world anyway, right? The lower mind is creating all of it, correct? So the lower mind, since it's the only thing functioning here, is <laughs> very aware of what's going on with, the energy of Megan and that energy of Megan is moving increasingly into dangerous territory, <laughs> right? You want to look at it from the standpoint of the, the one mind, the one ego. It's getting dangerous because Megan's, she's catching on too much. <laughs> she's doing things that are outside of the matrix. <laughs> this is not an okay thing, right? So what does it do? It sends everything it can your way especially the things that you're most likely to get hooked by. That's, that's what it'll do over and over and over again, especially the things you're most likely based on your patterning to get hooked by. That's what we have to remember. And that's where, um, that's where detachment is so important. I'll tell you, here's a really funny story. (laughs) So I had an experience, same thing. I love this. I love the story. So I had an experience where I had come to the recognition that this is exactly what was moving for me. And I had seen, Oh my God, like I can see where when I functioned outside of the world, truly I I cut myself off from the world and life was so magical, so completely different. It was like I was living in a completely different space, right? And then I had started, I had kind of rejoined the world consciously, you know, but did it, rejoined the world and was attempting to kind of still function in the same space I had been before, even though now I was engaged more as a wife and a mother and a teacher and a whatever else, right? And (laughs) so I had seen that there was this downward slide that took place over over a long period of time it was very subtle where I had gotten so engaged in the world that it was actually working against me in my own evolution I could see it very clearly there was no question it was like you know for someone like myself when I found like I literally can't find time to sit and meditate like that was not good for me right obviously based on what I do I actually do require time to do that so that I could do work like this and recognizing that there was so much pulling on me and so much for me that I was doing all in the name of service, right? That was, that's my big, my big hook is service. And there was so much pulling on me and I, I felt like I had to, I had to be there to do this for students and do it for children and do it for husband and, you know, whatever else. And Literally, I, it's funny, literally, I had this recognition, okay, it has to stop. I mean, it has to stop. No more. 
So starting tomorrow, or maybe it was like starting today, I don't remember what it was like, I'm, that's it. <laughs> I'm just changing, I'm gonna make major changes and that's what it's gonna be. So the next morning I got up, I made my bed like I normally do, and I went into meditation. I spent 45 minutes just meditating, came out, was like, yeah, that's pretty sweet. So I went downstairs, I was making breakfast, doing some housework, I'm like, cool, it'll be a great day. I'll just kind of relax, just be present, take care of some things that need to be taken care of, not worry about other things that are going to try to pull at me. I'm just going to be here. And I'm literally in the middle of that feeling like, okay, this is nice. And I get a text. <laughs> and the text on my phone says, hey, <laughs> my car won't start. Would you be available to come over and give me a jump? <laughs> right? And what did that pull on for me? Service. Can I be of service? Of course it happened. It was the perfect test. I'd be like, what, <laughs> what, what better test could someone like me be given? Here's a friend in need who's asking me to be of service to them. Of course I'm going to say yes, right? Although I didn't. But this is, and this is the point. The point is the universe sent it to me to see, could I truly detach? Because that was what was required to truly detach. That's not an easy thing to do because the world feels very real, <laughs> all right? So even in looking at it, even if you can be objective, which I could, I could look at it and go, oh my God, this is so obviously a test. I saw it, it, was, it wasn't hidden from me. But even in seeing it, I was witnessing both sides that were going on. I was witnessing the me that said, don't respond. Put your damn phone away. <laughs> don't even look at it today. And, and be, be detached today. And then the other side that went, yeah, but she's a friend. Yeah, but she's someone who's done a lot of things for me. Yeah, but the right thing to do is to help someone in need, right? Ooh, there's a good one. That's a good one. And so all of these little stories are running and I, and I have to look at all of it. I'm looking at both sides at the same time, witnessing all of it, right? And then where are you gonna make the choice from? Well, the choice gets made ultimately from where your priorities lie. So Megan, you spoke directly to making your spiritual work your first priority, right? So this is how you get tested. Is it really your first priority? Let's find out, <laughs> All right? Let's find out. Do you detach and risk the other person thinking that you blew them off? Risk the other person being upset that they were left with a car that wouldn't start and you weren't there to help them? Are you willing to do that for your spiritual work? Are you, right? And that's, that's why these things come like this, because ultimately that's what's required. Now it doesn't mean you're, you're there right now, but there will be a time you're going to be right there. It means the whole world has to go away for you. <laughs> Meaning there's no attachment to any of it. Nothing. Not your pets. Sorry, Meg. <laughs> Not your significant other. Sorry, PLN. <laughs> Not your kid. Sorry, Linda. None of it. No attachment. No attachment. No attachment. Oh, and then you can feel the energy of that when I even say it. It's like, oh, I don't know that I can do that. Thank you.